بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي لحبة في الله العلم as you know knowledge of Islam and علم النافع and we ask that Allah سبحانه وتعالى blesses all blesses us all with علم النافع رزق طيب وعمل متقبل العلم النافع is something incredibly important. And it is Elm of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, <coughs> and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, Hal yastawa al ladina ya'lamoon al ya'lamoon, wal ladina la ya'lamoon, inna ma yatadakkaru al ula al bab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Are those that know equal to those who do not know. Verily, the... <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, verily, those who are the people of knowledge, those who are in the know, they contemplate this, they remember this. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, La yastawi ya ladhina, la yastawi, la yastawi al ladhi ya'lamu, wa al ladhi la ya'lam. Kama la yastawi al hay wal mayt, wa sam'i, wa sami'i, wa al asun, wa al basir, wa al a'ma. Al ilm nur, yahtadi bihi al insan, wa yukhruju bihi min al zulimati ila nur, al ilm yirfa Allah bihi. من يشاء من خلقه. إمام بن ثيمين says regarding this ayah and he says this in his book كتاب العلم which is full of فوائد and benefits. He said those people who know and those people who don't know they're not the same. Similar to the way that though that the living is not like the dead and those who hear are not like those who are deaf and those who can see are not like those who are blind. Knowledge is light and it guides people uh, with this light. And people are taken from darkness to light with knowledge. And knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises uh, people with knowledge by giving them knowledge. He raises whosoever he pleases from his creation. Then he mentions the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem Yarfa Allah al-ladheena amanu minkum wal-ladheena utu al-ilma darajat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that Allah raises those who believe from amongst you and those he has given knowledge darajat He raises them up to different uh, different stations and different levels and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, May Yuridullahu bihi khayran yafiqahu fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them knowledge of the religion or gives them understanding of the religion. Because there's a difference between just having some knowledge, say someone has memorized a lot, and they can quote a lot, but maybe their understanding is not there. Maybe they don't have fiqh fi deen. They don't know how to put things in its proper place. And there's many people who went astray because of that. They were very good in memorization. They memorized the Quran. They memorized so much from the Sunnah. But they were extreme. Maybe they were extreme in tikfir or extreme in tibdir, you know, declaring people to be innovators. They went astray in one way or another because Allah did not favor them with fiqh fideen, with understanding. So the one who really has knowledge or is on another level is the one who is memorized and they understand those nusuls. Not just memorizing without understanding and not just understanding without memorizing. But understanding without memorizing is better than the one who memorizes without understanding. And I hope that's clear. The question comes up regarding knowledge, which is incredibly important, about seeking the knowledge, seeking the knowledge in places uh, where you're seeking from knowledge from people who are not from Ahl Sunnah. And sometimes there are uh, 
his skiat passed for a particular place to study, a particular uh, institute, or what have you, by ulama. But then people in those localities know the people of that particular center to be of people of Hezbiya, or people who have innovated in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion in one form or another. What is the situation? How should a person deal with that situation? First and foremost, it's always important to ask the ulama. If you have the ability to seek to ask one of the scholars or forward your question to those people who have access to the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, then you should do though do so seeking a fatwa, seeking a fatwa about a particular institute or something. Another thing I want to mention with regards to, as far as just general advice, because we've seen it countless times, you do not want to prohibit yourself from good and from seeking knowledge and khayr. Because at times, people will warn against something, but they give you no alternative. And this is a very shameful thing for someone to travel all the way to a foreign land, from America especially, because America is further than the UK, but you spend your money, your wealth, your time, your property, and whatever else you sacrifice to get there uh, to seek knowledge, and then the people have warned against the place so you don't learn anything. And I've seen this, so we have experience in this. I've seen people go to Yemen because they felt the institutes were the language centers, places they could have just learned the Arabic language were places of Hezbiya, or they felt they had bid'ah, or they felt they, the fact they weren't Salafi or what have you. So the people prohibited themselves from khair and prohibited themselves from benefiting. How do you go to Yemen and stay for a, a year or two years and you don't learn anything from the Arabic language or advance yourself in the religion? That's I believe, is a very shameful thing. And that is not understanding the fiqh deen or those fatawa of the ulama. And you'll find many fatawa, especially with particular situation, and I know of fatawa, where I was in situations and know people who were in situations who asked ulama sunnah, ulama that were well known for the sunnah, about study in places that those same ulama warned against severely. And the particular alam gave these two individuals permission to study in that place of bid'ah because they were grounded and they knew the people of innovation, but they had no other choice. Their situation restricted them from learning the Arabic language and being able to go seek the knowledge properly, they couldn't go sit with this alim. So the alim himself said, yes, in your particular situation, because you know the hizbiya of these individuals, you know how to be wear it, and this and that and the other, you can, you know, I see that there's no problem with you studying there because we don't have an alternative for you here in this particular city. So Habatifillah, we learn immensely from that, that you never prohibit yourself from khayr. This does not mean that you should go and study from the people of innovation, but rather if you have no alternative and what you're, the knowledge you're taking from them does not pertain uh, to their bid'ah, their innovation. And let's give you a, a good picture of that. Say you want to study the Arabic language and you have no other place to study except with some people who have some tasawwuf. You know, they're Sufi. Sufi to depend on the degree of tasawwuf. But if they're the only place you can study, I'm not talking about somebody who's left the fold of Islam because they believe Allah and His creation are one or, or Allah is inside the creation or whatever they believe. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking about someone who's from Ahl Bid'ah. They have some Bid'ah. And they're Ibadat. But you have no other alternative either except to remain ignorant or they're offering a very strong Arabic language program. So, if you are aware of their bid'ah, for one, ask the people of knowledge in your particular situation and ex have it explained de in detail. Number two, if you have no other choice, you, cannot, you, you should not prohibit yourself from good. Meaning, sitting jahil, say, no, mubtadi, 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 and you don't study anything, you don't learn anything because you've prohibited yourself from every kind of khayr. Is it better to stay ignorant or is it better to advance yourself and beware of the bid'ah of those people? So you don't want to cut yourself off from khayr. And that, we just leave it at that because this is a big, huge topic and it will require going back into the books and looking at some of the aqwal of the salaf of this ummah and, and what our ulama uh, 
of the Muhaqqiqin and stuff like this, what they say about this. But you have to look at the bottom line is, and I've asked at least six to seven different ulama on this issue, and I recorded it for those who are uh, really concerned themselves with those issues. And when I lived in Medina, and all of them said, and these are all ulama of Ahl Sunnah, most, mostly they were in Medina, some by phone call. And they said, all basically said the same thing, that it depends on the benefits and the harms about uh, not studying with Ahl Bidah, but actually going to give lectures to Ahl, uh, in, a, uh, in the Masajid of Ahl Bidah. So these are all these Masajid though, they all have to, you have to look at the harms and benefits and you need to have Fiqh Fi Deen to look at those harms and benefits and the Ulama are those who are best at looking at those issues. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was correct from myself, the Shaytan was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the Muhammad.